Welcome to this very special edition of Health Matters right here on the Balancing Act. It's the first in a four part series about the really important work that is being done at inpatient rehabilitation hospitals. A great segment coming up. In fact, I am on location at Health South, one of the premier inpatient rehabilitation hospitals in the country with over 100 hospitals nationwide. And I'm joined this morning by Dr. Dexan Cloen, Health South's Chief Medical Officer, and Dr. Cheryl Miller, National Director of Therapy Operations. Doctor, thank you so much for being here this morning. So happy to be here. Thank you, Dr. Thank Miller, you. as well. Dr. Cloen, let me start with you. Tell me a little bit about Health South. Health South is a rehabilitation system of mm -hmm. hospitals. And I should mention rehabilitation medicine. It's a special area of medicine. Doctors train in this specifically to help patients who have lost the ability to function in various ways that are important in their life. And so Health South is a system of 107 rehabilitation hospitals, 29 states in Puerto Rico. Wow. About one in five of all the patients in rehabilitation hospitals are in Health South sites. They may not have the name Health South prominently displayed because in many instances we're partnering with university hospitals, academic medical centers, or prominent medical centers in a city. But frequently you'll find the Health South name and you'll definitely find them all listed on the Health South website. To clarify, this is not like a nursing home? So here's a key for your audience. Remember these words. There's a difference between a hospital and a center or a skilled nursing facility. So we're rehabilitation hospitals. You'll find RNs on duty 24 hours a day in the hospital physicians accessible 24 hours a day, pharmacies on site, specially trained nurses, therapists, a great team. In a skilled nursing facility, which are very appropriate for certain patients, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you'll find some therapy services, but you'll find RNs only one shift a day is all they're required to have. Physicians aren't required to be available 24 hours a day. So there are quite a number of differences between those sites. So I hope your viewers, if they're ever in the position where they need to find care for a family member whose last ability to function, to ask the question, is this a rehabilitation hospital? Mm -hmm because it gives you peace of mind to make that right choice. Yes. Dr. Miller, let me bring you in. Tell me about your role and how you're helping patients here. My role as a leader of therapy in Health South is to make sure that our therapy services are provided in state-of-the-art environments, mm -hmm. and they're also provided by competent clinicians. And my role specifically is related to therapy, but to make sure our therapists have the best skills possible to provide our, our patients the best care possible. And speaking of patients, we have a video clip of one patient. I'd like to share that with my viewers, if I may. Great. Let's take a look real quick. I was paralyzed from my shoulders down when, when they transported me over. Um, there was, the only thing I could move was my head uh, and I could lift my shoulders. Uh, other than that, um, no other part of my body moved. Um, they, I, I couldn't even press a call button. Um, when I got here, they um, um, gave me a pneumatic call button where I had to blow into a tube uh, to try to get assistance. Um, I could not feed myself. Uh, you know, I was totally dependent upon the nursing staff here uh, and techs to uh, take care of me and um, depended upon the uh, physical therapy staff to, as I like to say, fix me, you know, to get me back from, as I said, being totally um, paralyzed to uh, a state of, of, of some um, independence. Doctor, I can only imagine that quality outcomes must be so important to you. Is that patient's experience typical? We get a lot of responses from patients that are very grateful for the team who's worked with them. The patients do the work themselves a lot as well. We measure patients' ability to function when they arrive at our hospital, and then again when they're discharged. And so there's actually a numerical score to show how much they've improved. And we can demonstrate uh, that they do so much better in our hospitals that we're proud of that. That's great. And Dr. Miller, as a result of the therapy, which I'm hearing now from Dr. Cloen, uh, what, can a, what can a patient expect in terms of the goals and, and gaining that independence they want so much? So when a patient comes into our hospital, the first thing we want to know is what their goals are. Once we know what their goals are, it can help us to identify what we want to work on while they're here 
and what their treatment is going to involve while they're here so they can return home independent and most importantly to a more meaningful life. And Dr. Cloe, and I'm going to end with you, it's really important what I'm hearing here. It's very indi individualized and, and it sounds like a team here. Most importantly, the patient is really right in the middle of that team selecting their goals, letting us know what's important to them, and working hard because rehabilitation is no easy task. Thank you so much for your time. Give me that website one more time. HealthSouth.com. HealthSouth.com. God bless you both, and we'll see you again in part two of this great series. Looking forward to it. Thank, Thank you. you, ladies. And of course, if you want to learn more, just go to our website. That's TheBalancingAct.com, TheBalancingAct.com. Don't forget, we're also on Facebook and Twitter. We always love hearing from you.